Well, welcome back to this video that begins our second unit of geometry and design. In this video, we're going to start more carefully developing concepts like ratio, proportion, and similarity. And we're going to use all of them in order to introduce a new tool for drafting and layout that vastly speeds up the process of constructing two different line segments or more in some cases that satisfy given rational relationships between them. We're going to, in this video, just introduce the sector itself after reviewing how we've been able to you know, perform this task in the past. Uh, I'm not going to do so much to explain why it works. I'm just barely going to show how it works. But then one of the primary goals of the remaining uh, video lessons in this unit are going to be strongly tied to making sense of what this tool is, what, you know, what the sector is. But before we get there, I'm just going to review what our process is so far. You know, so imagine that you know, I wanted to lay out a rectangle where it has a base, perhaps, that looks like that. And I want to draw sides of that rectangle so that the height to width ratio uh, of this rectangle are, is 5 to 7. Well, what we would, would have done in the past is we would have taken a compass and, well, we would have one possibility is that we would have taken a compass and tried to step off seven equal steps from the left to the right of this segment so that we would know what our, our module is for this rectangle. And that's the approach that I'm going to take here. But I'll also remind you that we also had the more accurate, or repeatable anyway, uh, parallel line construction for subdividing a segment into a given number of equal pieces. And the construction that we performed with the aid of a straight edge a layout square and a ruler. But for a segment this size, it shouldn't be too terribly difficult to step out seven equal pieces to get the width module. So I'll try here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I am just a little bit over on my on the scale of my paper. It looks like I'm a little bit maybe three sixteenths over. So I'm going to shrink the span of my compass just a little bit, which I'm hoping is about one seventh of the overshoot. And then I'm going to in the opposite direction try stepping out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I went about too far. I went about twice as far as I should have um, because now I am short by about the same distance that I was long. So I'm just gonna open the beams of my compass about half as much as I closed them before and try one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that time I hit it. So, so that you can see where these marks are actually um, appearing, I am going to step them out one more time and leave a pencil mark at each of them. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven at the end. Okay, so there's our seven even steps. And so the next thing that I would do, I'm gonna leave that compass set to that step size, set to that module. And the next thing I'm gonna do is line my straight edge back up with the baseline, grab a layout square, and I guess somewhat lightly, draw some verticals that are going to contain the sides of this rectangle. 
And the way I get the correct length of those sides is that I take my compass and step out one, two, three, four, five steps. And I'll darken that mark. And then the same thing on the other side. One, two, three, four, five steps. And I will darken that mark. I guess I'll just line my straight edge up with those two marks and connect them. And finally, I've got my rectangle whose height to width ratio for its sides is five to seven. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that approach. Other than it can be a little bit time consuming, especially if you are trying to step out your distances using the iterative stepping method with our compass like I did here. Because if it takes multiple tries, well, that's just more time. So if we introduce this new tool, the sector, and kind of reproduce the problem. Now, I this baseline is probably not the same size as that one. I guess I can check. I'll measure it. Yeah, let's actually try to do that. I want to reproduce the same rectangle, but using a different approach. So I'm measuring the size of this baseline. Ooh, I got close. So there is the left and right endpoints that make that baseline the same width as the baseline on this rectangle that I, I created our old way. Well, now let's suppose I want to create it differently. I want to create it more quickly and more efficiently. And if I introduce this new tool called a sector, then that's going to be something that's possible for me to do. So here's how the sector works. It's hinged at the top. I just need to open it up and I look at this scale that's running down on mine, it's running down the center of the two beams of the sector. And since I want the baseline of my, uh, of my rectangle to be made up of seven modules, I am going to put the points of my compass into the pockets where the sevens are. And then I, I have to open up the sector so that it will fit the span between my compass. And I've just done that. Sometimes it feels like it takes about three hands to accomplish that task, but um, I've, just, I've just done that. We can see that the tips of my compass are lined up with the sevens on this, this sector. Okay, so now I'm going to um, close down. The t I'm going to leave the, the sector where it, it was. It's going to hold its position. But I'm going to squeeze my compass down until it fits into the pockets where the fives are. And then I'm going to tighten it so it locks into place and double check that I've got the measurement right. And looks like I'm close. All right, now I can put the sector away, close it up and stash it. I need to, this is going to, this measurement that I just took is actually going to be the distance that I use for the height of my rectangle. It's going to be how tall the left and right sides are. So I'm going to go back to lining up my straight edge with the baseline and lightly draw in a couple of sides. And I'm going to Take the compass that I just set to the five module length from the sector, make a mark from the bottom corner to what's going to ultimately be the top corner on that side. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the right. Mark both of those. And I'm going to connect those two marks. with a line segment. And what I've done is I've reproduced a rectangle in a fraction of the time that has the same height to width ratio of five to seven. 
And that's, the, that's one of the big benefits of our sector, is that it speeds up this process of constructing segments that satisfy particular pro proportional relationships that we might want them to satisfy. So for much of the rest of unit two, we are going to explore concepts from Euclid's Elements books five and six. We're gonna jump ahead to those that will allow us to make sense of not just how this sector works, because we will see some additional applications of the sector, but why? And this sector has everything to do with ratio and proportion and then a concept that we haven't really introduced yet called similarity. So we're going to have to put those concepts onto a firm foundation so that we can make sense of our sector. So in order for you to do that, you're going to want to get your hands on a sector. And it turns out that there is, at the time of this recording, there's at least three ways that I know of where you can get a sector. And two of them, you can get your sector today and you can get it for free. Okay, so the first, first way that you can get your hands on a sector is to visit Jim, Pol <laughs> Jim Tolpin and George Walker's website byhandandeye.com and I'll put a link to that website and all of the others that I'm going to mention um, in, in this last part of our video in the video description. So Jim and George are the two who are, I, I, in, in my opinion, the most responsible for reestablishing an interest, uh, uh, at least amongst woodworkers, uh, in these pre-industrial design techniques that you're now learning. And at their website, they have made a free PDF file available that you can download that has a, um, a scaled drawing of sector parts. You know, the two sides of the two beams of a sector with these different scales drawn on them. So what you would need to do is download that file and print it out onto heavy paper such as cardstock and then cut out the pieces and reassemble them. Best way to do that is with a paper rivet, but if you don't have access to that, you could even get by with just poking a hole through the pivot point and tying a piece of yarn with knots on either end, and that'll serve you long enough to make, make, make your sector work for this course. Um, I just learned yesterday, <clears throat> the day before filming this video, that another site is making a paper sector available for free. Uh, this is a site in the UK, but it won't prevent you from downloading it if you're in this country. And it's, um, that, that, that site is, uh, well, I've just drawn a blank, um, but I will get it back really quickly. It is um, uh, First Light Works firstlightworks.com and I'll put a link to them as well. And so they just have an alternate design for the uh, paper sector. It works just as well as Jim and George's. Uh, so you could download that one if you just like it better. They actually made it in response to the current coronavirus pandemic that we're experiencing because they understand that there are a number of people that are stuck at home looking for something to do and perhaps some of them would like to do what you're doing right now, which is learning about pre-industrial design and, and um, learning about how the sector works. So that's the other freely available sector. If you have uh, money to burn, there's a third option that uh, you know really isn't a bad one, it's just that um, it, it's going to cost. The company called Acer Ferris has started producing uh, um, solidly constructed sectors that um, are about, they're similar to the one that I'm using, uh, but it's, it's, a, it's a different design. Um, and uh, it, they, they work very well. They um, hold their shape and form very well. They're very accurately constructed. Um, it's just that they cost about $200, I think. I'd have to go back and look at the site to be sure of that. But it's, it's somewhere in that ballpark. So, look, if you are thinking that you are wanting to go all in on pre-industrial design and you're the kind of person that has to have all the tools right now, that's certainly not a bad one to invest in. It will last you a uh, lifetime, if not more than that, uh, if you take care of it. Um, but if you're still testing things out, then the two paper sectors ought to be more than adequate to get you through this class and beyond. So the options are there, uh, you know, just pursue the ones that uh, make, make the most sense for you. 
In our next video, we're going to start unpacking um, some of the earliest aspects of Euclid's books five and six that will be the concepts that we need to be putting in place so that we can understand the relationship between ratio, proportion, and similarity, and then how a sector works. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you back at the chalkboard again for the next video.